the brain doesn't exist in a vacuum. In fact, it's communicating reciprocally with the body all the time, even if we're not aware of it. I am Sarah Prescott. I am an assistant professor in the Department of Biology at MIT and an investigator with the Picard Institute for Learning and Memory. We work on interoception, neurons outside of the brain, neurons that are in our organs, which is how the body is able to sense and respond to cues from within itself. These neurons are important because they control life-preserving behaviors such as breathing, heart rate, and digestion, yet they are poorly understood at the cellular and molecular level. We, in my lab, are particularly interested on the neurons in the respiratory tract. There's so much that we don't know about our own bodies, and so these neurons could unlock clues to developing all sorts of new therapies for human disease. For example, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, Neurons are thought to be totally passive bystanders in this disease, and we are wondering whether or not they are contributing to any of the pathology. We're setting up a variety of different mouse models of airway diseases, and then manipulating neurons and seeing if it changes the progression of that disease over time. I think that the airways is a great model system to start asking those fundamental questions. So a lot of what we're trying to understand is to map out the airway to brain pathways. This includes neurons within the vagus nerve, which are responsible for airway to brain signaling. Part of our, my prior work, we discovered that there were nearly a dozen different subtypes of vagal neurons which innervate the respiratory tract. We know what a handful of those neurons are doing, but the rest of them still largely remain uncharacterized. We're also moving beyond the vagus nerve, including this very elusive network of neurons whose cell bodies live within the respiratory tract and who mediate all sorts of local reflexes. Another major question we have in the lab is to understand the full breadth of responses that these neurons elicit. So classically, people think that neurons trigger largely these acute autonomic reflexes, such as cough. One of the major responses when airways experience challenges over time is that it can trigger not just these acute behavioral responses, but also adaptive changes in the tissue structure. We have this idea of something we like to call reflexive remodeling, this idea that neurons are actually in a reflexive way, meaning when they're triggered by all sorts of cues, they are then signaling directly to the stem cells in the airway and causing those stem cells to change their behavior, thereby altering the composition of that tissue. My lab uses a combination of mouse models as well as molecular neuroscience tools, genomics, and cell culture models to address these questions. Ultimately, our hope is that our observations will be translated one day to the clinic, and I think that there's lots of opportunities in the future for us to be working with clinicians to understand how our insights can help them make more informed decisions about disease and how to treat disease. It's been a huge honor to be invited to be part of this exceptional community of scientists. The Department of Biology at MIT has a track record of scientific excellence, and on top of that, it is a leader in STEM education, and it attracts the best and brightest students who are not only able to tackle the most ambitious problems, but are also interested in actually translating those discoveries into real-world applications. I'm also a member of the Pickauer Institute, which is a community of scientists who are experts in neuroscience and questions about how the brain works. And as someone who is not a classically trained neuroscientist, it's been wonderful to be welcomed into that community and to be learning from all sorts of insights across diverse disciplines within neuroscience. It's very important to me that in my lab we have a culture of kindness and ultimately that will lead to more open conversation, more fruitful collaborations, and more productivity. I am excited about the potential for real fundamental discovery.